So DD comes with grains. Grains are a special type of particle where the particles keep distance between one another. But in Houdini, there's multiple ways of doing it. So you might be questioning, should I use vellum grains or should I use pop grains? So in this video, I'll show you exactly how to set up the different types of grains in Houdini. Let's jump into it. So this month, Patreon, I done a couple of videos that included grains and some included pop grains and some included vellum grains. So in this video, I just wanted to compare the two and see what the difference is. So let's start by just dropping down the geometry note. And I want to start with vellum grains first because vellum grains are like the easiest to learn, really. We only need a couple of notes for this. So let's drop down the box and let's enable the ground plane so we can see how far it is from the floor. Let's hit a transform note. Let's rotate it a bit and just make a hover above the floor, like a little bit. I think maybe one and a Y is enough. Just so it can fall down a bit and then collide with the floor. So the way we configure grains in Vela is just by adding a um, grains note. So as you might know already, Vellum works in SOPs, so you don't have to go in dynamic networks, which makes it a lot, lot easier. And let's set this to a smaller size. So here we have a point separation of 0.15. So we can just hit the create points from volume and set a pulse size here, and you automatically get this mesh with different particles. So it's really that easy. We can disable the display of spheres. Uh, we can enable it, doesn't really matter. But we can jitter the scale, so it's a bit less regular. Because if we disable that, you can see it's, it kind of works with voxels. So you can see it's like the step kind of base thing, which might be a bit too regular for anyone's taste. With Jitter, we get something that's a bit more irregular, which I think looks nicer. So the thing that we need now is a solver in order to solve these calculations. So we just add a Velm solver. The thing we want to do with grains is we can disable the constraint iterations and we can up the substeps quite drastically and disabling smoothing iterations because grains use a kind of a different type of constraints than cloth. So that's why we're having these weird, <laughs> these weird iterations and substeps. Let's enable the ground plane and let's see what we get. Oh, and let's up the memory cache to maybe 25 gigabytes and let's start simulating. So as you can see, it takes quite a bit of time to simulate vellum grains. They're a lot easier, but they're also not the fastest way. But yeah, it's a very, very easy setup. And yeah, you could just establish the volume you want to emit from and you add a floor, set your collisions and that's it. So yeah, that's like a quick, quick setup in the vellum solver. Let's see how we get this done in the pop solar. So uh, I definitely had a big typo there, but I'll leave it because otherwise we'll have to re-simulate. Uh, let's disable this now and say pop grains. So for the pop grains, I'm gonna copy the box and transform and paste it in. So we have the same setup. And the thing I wanna do now is add a point from volume. So because we're using pops, we wanna generate the points ourselves. The dim solver has this handy kind of like create points from volume that just does the work for you. But if we want to do it in pops, we have to do a bit more manual, which is fine to be honest. And let's set the point separation to 0 0.15. So you see, we get a very, very dense mesh. I want to add a skill attribute and actually maybe let me reset it now to 0 0.1 and add a sphere. So you can see what we're doing again, because we're manually doing these things. We want to make sure that the skill we're adding to our particles are correct. So if we set the sphere to a radius by one, I set it to primitive, so it's really fast. And you can see now they're too big. So we want to correct the skill in the points from volume. And I find that 0 0.5 is the right skill. So now these shouldn't overlap or overlap very minimally. And that sets us up a bit more for success. And what you can see is they just added a p-scale value the point attributes and the pop network can pick this up. So let's just drop down a pop network and get this going. And maybe let's dial down the point separation to 0 0.02. So we have a bit more points to work with. You can see we have quite a dense mesh. And then what we wanna do is we wanna pipe these points into the pop network and we already get this set up. The only thing we have to tweak is in our pop source, we wanna use all points and in the birth, we want to set the activation to SS1. 
So basically, if the frame number is one, so the first frame, then we want activation and otherwise it won't activate. So if we scroll to the second frame, you can see this is now disabled. So and if we scroll through, it keeps being disabled and uh, it's only active on the first frame. So that's great. That's what we want for this. We can turn off guides because I don't think we really need them. And now we have this. So we have a particle network, but as you see, nothing is happening. And that's because we have to set our gravity first. So let's add a gravity force underneath the pop solver. And what you can see now, we have gravity, but it just falls to the floor. So let's add a floor object as well. So we call that a ground plane in DOPS. And we need to merge that in with the pop solver. So let's add a merge. And we want the collisions first, then we want the pop solver. Something to be aware of in dynamics. And let's not display our proxy geometry. So if we display it, you can see there's just a floor, but I found it a bit distracting. So I'm going to disable that. And let's see what we get now. So yeah, you can see we have an interaction with the floor, but we don't have grains yet. So that's why these particles are not moving away from each other. So that's the last thing we want to add, pop grains. And we pop that in between the source and the merge node. And the particle separation, we can copy that from our points from volume. So let's copy that parameter and then paste ref reference. And we can keep the uniform radius because we have a uniform radius. If you randomize the radius, then definitely disable this. But for now, that's okay. And in the pop solver, we can maybe change our sub steps a bit to let's try five first and see what we get with that. And if we come up one level, we can up our cache a bit. So we don't have to re-simulate every time it goes out of RAM. Let's just import the pop object. And my viewport is getting a bug. Let's just ignore it for now and hit simulate. So as you can see already, this works a lot faster than Phelan grains. I think this is about two, maybe three times as fast. So especially if you scale up your simulation, pop grains are supposed to be a lot faster for if you have lots and lots of points. It's always worth considering if you want to spend a bit more time to make a setup and then having faster simulations, or they actually okay with longer simulation times because you just want a quick setup, make it work, and then, I don't know, you can go for a walk or go to the gym or do some other work and then come back later when the cache is done. Like that, that's a totally valid way of working. So that's something to keep in mind when picking between these two different setups. But yeah, as you can see, we have a pop grain simulation, quite easy. The thing you notice now is that we just have points, which is in most cases fine, I guess, because you want to instance point in your render. But if you want to visualize what this looks like, we could just simply add a pop sprite in our pop network. And we can add that underneath our pop grain. And we get the standard sprite map is this smoke puff, but I like to use a circle dot pick. And then if I disable the sprite shop and enable it again, we greet it with these nice circles. So this gives us kind of like a similar view to what we had in the vellum grains. And then you can also add a pop color if you want to, to randomize these colors a bit. And you can say random. And now we get like all these random colors. And you can use different values to shade these, which is quite a cool trick. So you can use the velocity, for example, and you can use the age of the particle. So you can have all these different things in order to shade them, which is quite cool. I'll just keep it a constant maybe for now. And lastly, maybe let's disable this and let's throw some weight at both of these. So we can see the difference between simulation times for either of them. So let's maybe set this to 0 0.01. Fingers crossed this is going to work. I should say first, I think, <laughs> before I'm doing this. Or maybe 0 0.002. So this is worth noting already. When you configure vellum grains, it takes quite a long time to cook if you're using this create points from volume. And especially if you jitter the scale. So without jitter scale, it's actually not bad. But with the jitter scale, it is definitely taking a long time. So that's something to be aware of when you pick between these two different systems. Okay, so after about 15 minutes of loading, I think I had enough. So let's just try something maybe less tiny. So now we have a separation of 0 0.01. I'm actually going to copy this parameter and then paste it into the pop grains. So we have something similar to compare. So let's paste this in the points from volume. Paste relative reference. There we go. You can see how quick this updates already. 
Again, this is also because it doesn't have the jitter skill. But I want to jitter the skill because then we might have issues with point relax. So yeah, let's run this now and see how quick this goes or rather how slow this goes. All right, so that took over like five minutes for 50 frames. So it's quite, quite a long time. But let's have a look and see what we've got. So we have sphere collapsing and all these grains fall on the floor. You get quite nice detail around these edges and how it kind of like disperses. But let's see what we get with pop grains and see if it's any faster. All right, so for pop grains, we only need two minutes for a similar amount of frames with the same amount of particles. And I actually quite like the detail of this. Like I love how it clumps a bit on these edges and in my opinion i think it looks even nicer than with um, vellum so you get a shorter simulation time for nice simulation but with the trade-off of having a longer setup time so now we can compare the two this is a lot more uniform it disperses out a bit further as well so yeah there's two different systems to play with with vellum offering you a quicker setup oh but the only thing that's different is the substep. So it will actually be interesting to see how many substeps you need in the different systems and then how quick the simulation times are respectively. So yeah, that's it. Two different systems. Vellum, quicker to set up, a bit slow for simulation. Pop grains, slow to set up, a lot quicker when it's simulating. And that's it. If you want to know more about these systems, then consider subscribing to my Patreon. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.